Three years ago, Mercedes AMG gave us the GT63 four-door, and it seemed a strange idea. It wasn't that we didn't like the concept of an all-new V8 mega saloon from one of the biggest names in the business. It was more what the letters in the name suggested, that AMG had taken the rawness and aggression of the GT Coupe and attempted to translate it into more luxurious four-door form. Surely that approach could only yield a car with one seriously confused personality. Or maybe AMG was going to try and create something really quite different in spirit to the GT Coupe. In which case, why bastardize the name? Either way, we were skeptical. But it's fair to say, we all underestimated AMG just a little bit. This car was so loaded with engineering complexity, it was like some sort of Rube Goldberg device. It had four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, a hugely sophisticated electronically controlled locking differential in the back that is tuned in to all four wheels in terms of torque vectoring and ESC input. Honestly, it was a recipe for disaster, but somehow they've pulled it off. How they just managed to meld everything, all that technology into a cohesive whole. And this is a car that just, I know it sounds obvious, goes where you want it to go, responds to the throttle how you want a four litre, 630 horsepower twin turbo V8 to respond. It's just great fun to drive. And best of all, it feels properly long snouted and rear driven, and low slung in the manner of a proper GT car, which after all is exactly what this is supposed to replicate, except for people who really need four doors and four proper seats. And if you told me that they were gonna take an E-Class platform, strengthen it up a little bit, and then just throw every bit of technology you can throw at a big, fast saloon car. I just wouldn't have believed that it would be this good to drive. And, and as I say, this cohesive and natural feeling, I think that's what makes this car so great. It just feels natural. It feels smaller than it is. Both axles just they're on the same wavelength. With a lot of cars, you can feel that four-wheel steering sort of initiate either through slower corners where uh, the wheels are going in contrary motion or through the faster corners where they, where they act in unison, but, but not in this AMG. It just works and it goes. And the steering has got real feel to it as well. That's another huge surprise we learned when this car first came out. It's got that sort of incidental road chatter, but also a lovely feeling of weight and response. I mean, honestly, they, they pulled it out of the bag with this car, and I, and I don't think it's over-egging the pudding to say that this is one of the most underappreciated cars of recent years. You don't see many. So surely if you're looking for something that feels a lot like a, a proper GT car and looks quite a lot like a proper GT car, and damn, it sounds a lot like a proper GT car. This is the only game in town. But not so fast, because in the new B8 Grand Coupe, Alpina is giving AMG something to worry about. This is exactly the sort of car they do very well in Buchlo, and like the AMG, the B8 uses a big V8 with the turbochargers nestled within the V of the cylinders. At 4.4 litres, the unit is larger than that of the AMG, but doesn't make quite as much power or torque. 613 brake horsepower and 590 pound foot for the B8 play 630 brake horsepower and a ludicrous 664 pound foot for this top spec AMG GTS four door. That said, both cars can haul themselves to 62 miles an hour in roughly the same time it takes a McLaren F1. As ever with Alpina, there are details. The V8 Grand Coupe might be based on the M850i Grand Coupe, but the ZF gearbox is reinforced and that N63 V8 is given much more cooling apparatus to cope with the higher power and torque outputs and sustained high-speed autobahn running. The suspension has also been comprehensively revised and the torque split between the axles tweaked to improve stability. In truth, it's every bit as complicated as the AMG, but does it feel as coherent? We'll soon find out. As for the way the B8 looks, you can judge it for yourself. But the usual Alpina signifiers are all here. The draping front splitter, deco set pinstripes, 
a little bootlid spoiler, quad exhausts, no longer by a Krapovich, sadly, and a set of enormous forged multi-spoke alloys. Next to the pebble-like AMG, it's a brute, but also, perhaps, a little more elegant. As for cost, well, brace yourself. After options, both cars are more than 150 grand, but you do get real exclusivity for your money. The AMG is already a rare enough sight on British roads, and B8 sales over here will almost certainly remain in single digits. So welcome to the inside of this £155,000 Alpina B8 Grand Coupe. As ever, with Alpina, there's a lot to talk about inside the car before you even get to the mechanical stuff, starting with this lovely Lavalina trimmed steering wheel. Honestly, the cutters and the trimmers in Buchlo are absolutely world class. This is uh, this lever comes from a herd of cows in Bavaria. I think Rolls-Royce are the only other manufacturer in the world to use a Lavalina lever. We've got the whole dashboard, which is trimmed in merino, and also the seats. It's an incredibly plush place. I think when the 8 Series came out, people were a little bit disappointed. Uh, but the architecture was a bit boring, but I think that combination of just strong ergonomics and then Alpina's lovely leather finish is just such a killer combo. It makes the AMG feel a bit caricatured and uh, frankly a bit rattly as well. Obviously you've got the plaque on the transmission tunnel. This is B8 009, so a very early car as you'd expect. And the, here's the main thing, these new aluminium CNC machined paddles that are frankly better than anything BMW or BMW M is fitting to their cars at the moment and they just look so neat lovely cool to touch firm and they've got nice action as well full marks Alpina for that kind of innovation because it would have been so easy just to keep the old switchtronic buttons which frankly were never much good and the idea, as ever, with Alpina, and you have to remember, this is exactly the sort of car that Alpina does really well. If you look back to the 70s and 80s, stuff like the B7 Turbo Coupe, and then obviously their V12 versions of the 7 Series in the 90s, they were cars that really gave the driver a lot of satisfaction, but, but did it in a way that was just it slowly unfolded. And I think that's what we're experiencing with this car as well. It is very much a slow burner. First impressions, I mean, it doesn't have the dialed in feel of the AMG straight from the off. You might get in this, drive it a few miles down the road and get out thinking, so what? And to be honest, that's kind of the point with Alpina. There is a beautiful linearity to the steering. They've actually elevated this quite considerably from the regular 8 series and it just allows you to thread the car so neatly. It's a big car, I'm not gonna pretend that it shrinks around you to any dramatic extent, but it's really not a difficult car to place and so much of that comes through the steering. So Alpina, they play with the gearing, they obviously play with the front suspension and the results are subtle, but equally undeniable. As for the engine, this is essentially the same unit they use in the B5 by Turbo which is to say it's exceptional at, uh, at what it's designed to do. And it's not, it's not the blood and thunder unit of the AMG. It's a lot more civilized and, and cultivated than that, than that AMG unit. The throttle pickup's clean, and then it just spins out in really sweet, free revving fashion. It is a great unit, this. And the way it throws this 2.1 ton car down the road just has to be experienced to be believed. Now Alpina started off in the 60s, obviously Burkhard Bovensee from the founder, modifying uh, BMW engines of the Neuer Klasse, carburettors, crankshafts, but these days it's difficult to say whether their speciality lies more in engines or suspension, and it's no different with this car. It's a comprehensively different setup, this suspension to what you'll find in an M850i. The, the damper rates are recalibrated, there's an extra comfort plus mode which really, really lets them relax and lets the body move in a beautifully fluid way on the motorway. New springs are fitted, the tuning of the active anti-roll bar is different as well, and the suspension's also been tweaked. And it's not just an increase in negative camber or toe or or those sort of very fine adjustments that manufacturers can make. There's actually new metal in the suspension. And the result is a car that doesn't struggle to find its meter on 
most A or B roads. It doesn't dial you into the surface like the AMG does, but frankly, neither does it labor the surface. There's a new wheel and tire combination. This is the only eight series, including the M8 to wear 21 inch wheels and Alpina's own bespoke rubber compound from Pirelli. I have to say, I think 21 inches is too big for this car. It's a little bit too pattery when you're just mooching around. You'd probably be better off in something like a B5 by turbo based, five series based car. But then you start to up the ante a little bit and it starts to come together in a really, really big way. What you get with this B8 is a car that permits actually quite a lot of movement, quite a lot of vertical movement, an appreciable degree of body roll but the rates at which that happens are just so beautifully judged. It's that, when you combine that with the precision and intuitive gearing of the steering, that you get something that's greater than the sum of its parts with this car. Linear steering, linear engine response, really fluid body control. It is a lovely thing, but it just takes a while to get under its skin. It's a bit of a cliche to talk about a car breathing with the road, but when it comes to serious performance saloons, I don't think any manufacturer does it better than Alpina does it, and, and that's the case here. As for being an out-and-out -out driver's car, I mean, straight away, for something that's designed to sit at 180 miles an hour on an autobahn all day, do it comfortably, you know, and at the same time can be easily driven at low speeds. The gearbox just going from drive into reverse in this car is so much easier than it is in the AMG, which has to scratch its head a little bit every time you want to do a three-point turn. This car, the calibration of all that mundane, everyday stuff, it's just done so nicely. I've got one criticism of the way this car behaves in terms of its handling. It's just that I wish they tuned the four-wheel drive system to be a little bit more rear biased. You can tell that this is a natively longitudinally engined car with most of the power going to the rear. Of course you can. But I just think compared to the AMG, it's just a little bit neutral and sometimes flavorless by comparison when you're really working it through, through second and third gear corners. You can feel that front axle working a little bit harder, just pushing the nose just very, very subtly. We're not talking about outright understeer here, just that sort of slight sense that the car's balance is a bit forward leaning. The AMG just does so much right in that regard. It feels, obviously it's got the ability to, to go rear wheel drive only and disconnect the front drive shafts, but even when you've got it in four wheel drive mode, you get that sense that it's pushing from its hips and, uh, through corners, you get a lovely sense of of rear wheel drive balance. And I think in the Alpina, if they chose to, they could have gone further down that road with this car. But obviously they're about stability, neutrality, very high speeds, very big forces. That might help you if you've got to do a, an emergency lane change at 170 on an autobahn. But it just makes the cars fractionally more aloof when you're on a good B road. And it's where the AMG really gets one over this V8 Grand Coupe. In the end, and despite their on paper similarities, these cars are going to appeal to quite different types of driver. The AMG is brash, but oh so capable too. The Alpina less obviously effusive, and more of a slow burner, but it's so polished in its manners and for everyday use, it has one of the great engine gearbox combinations for this kind of car. Does either give you the satisfaction of the real GT McCoy, something like an Aston DB11? Not quite. But should you consider one of these cars before you go out and buy something like a Bentley Bentayga? Absolutely. As for which is better, if you'll permit the cop out, for me, head says Alpina, but heart says AMG.